Welcome in everybody to the tank here in New Concord at John Glenn High School for MVL girls basketball between two of the best teams in the MVL. We have the John Glenn Muskies and the West Muskingum Tornadoes going to battle tonight and tonight history is on the line for a player on the John Glenn side. A chance to get to a thousand points tonight. Maya Oliver, a junior for the Muskies, she is just six points away from reaching 1,000 points as we get started here in New Concord. And right off the bat, a jumper from the left elbow. Lila Johnson for West Muskingum, just 10 seconds into this ball game. Here is Oliver with the basketball, just needs six points for 1,000. Thanks for joining us here on Storied Rivals Sports Media's Facebook page, YouTube, and Twitter. Will Ford here with you for high school girls basketball on a Wednesday night in the MVL. Oliver has it. Looking for somebody. Has it back now on the left wing. Thought about a lob towards the basket. Now to the corner. Left wing three ball. Off the backboard. Offensive rebound, John Glenn. Oliver has it, Zeminski's in the left corner, a crossover, Oliver drives, throws up a wild shot, gets her own offensive rebound, and what a putback. There was some English on that basketball, and now four points for Maya Oliver needed to get to 1,000. Two all in this first quarter. Low pass, almost turned over, now a backdoor cut and a layup off the glass. Two for two for Lila Johnson. And it's 4-2 Tornadoes. Oliver with a dangerous pass to the left wing. Now Zeminski has it up top to the right wing now. Dolan with it, back to Zeminski. Zeminski drives, lots of defensive pressure, hits the deck, and there's gonna be a foul called afterwards on the following shot and going to the free throw line, 4-2, Madeline Winland. First free throw is good for Winland. Four to three, West Muskingum in the early going here in New Concord. Again, just four more points needed for Maya Oliver to eclipse 1,000 for her career as just a junior. West M facing a little pressure here, breaks it pretty easily. Nice ball fake into the basket for the deuce, Jaden Thornton. Zeminski on the left wing. She's been on a heater the last three games, averaging 29 points per game the last three. Now a right wing three ball, short. Oliver throws it off a West End player and it's corralled now on the floor and a foul is gonna be called and it's gonna stay with John Glenn. I believe they're calling that on Thornton. Oliver will inbound the basketball and throw it near midcourt to Winland. And now Zeminski has it. Deep three for Oliver. Clanks off the back of the rim. West M comes away with the rebound. Now in transition. Missed the layup after shaking off Oliver. Now Zeminski's gonna run. And they're going to call an offensive foul on Riley Zeminski. Great job getting in position. Taylor Spung, the senior for the Tornadoes, forces the offensive foul. And it's 6-4. to four. Tornadoes maintain the lead through three 
minutes and 10 seconds. Laney Johnson kicks to the left wing. Here's Deborah Allen. Wide open down low, blocked by Dolan. Putback's no good. West Ham now with a third opportunity and they turn it over, maybe. No, they don't, they keep it in play. One dribble, pull up, defensive foul on Maya Oliver pushing down Spung. Wild possession there. Spung had the ball down low and was blocked by Dolan. West Ham got their own rebound, missed, got the rebound again and almost turned it over. Now they have it back underneath, they get it in play. Good straight up defense by Winland and now the other way, Oliver, left handed layup and one! Now just two points away from a thousand. This to bring it within one point, an old fashioned three point play. And it's short, so the next basket for Maya will put her at a thousand if it's a two, or a thousand and one if it's a three. Good defense getting in the passing lane and a turnover. Throwing it ahead to Oliver. Is this it? The Euro and a foul. So to the free throw line. She just missed one on the potential three point play. Now two free throws to hit a thousand. And it suddenly gets very quiet here in this arena. Swish on the first one. Just one point now for Maya Oliver to reach a thousand as a junior. Three dribbles. And she misses. So one point for Oliver. She's one for three from the free throw line midway through this first quarter and has five points. Next basket, two or three, will put her over a thousand. West Ham driving, missing, getting their own offensive rebound, spung. Now it's kicking to the left wing, deep three, no good. Maya Oliver rebounds to Winland, now over to Dolan. And the ball is gonna be in Maya's hands. Zeminski on the right wing with it. Zeminski pulls up for three. Too strong, offensive rebound, missing. Another offensive rebound. Now Oliver, Euros, and is fouled, and she gets a 1,000 on the and one. What a moment here in New Concord. The hoop, the harm to the free throw line for another three point opportunity. And now, a thousand point score as they stop the game with her at midcourt with a banner. What a moment. As a junior, Maya Oliver eclipsing a thousand points, joining the thousand point club. Just the fourth female in school history for John Glenn to reach a thousand points. She's the first female to reach a thousand points as a junior. I don't know if you heard that over the over the loudspeaker there. 
And now you've got to return and play some basketball. Now you have to bring your emotions back. Maya Oliver did the free throw line to shoot one, and I think they're going to call a timeout now. John Glenn's going to call a timeout, full timeout. So Maya, just the fourth player in John Glenn girls basketball history to reach 1,000 career points, the first to ever do it as a junior. She's got half a season of basketball left, just under, plus some tournament games. This John Glenn team is pretty good. They're going to play some games in the tournament. And an entire senior season could very well go down as the leading scorer in John Glenn girls basketball history. And we're glad we were able to capture that for you here live on our Facebook page, Twitter, X, uh, and YouTube. Storied rival sports media, Will Ford here with you. Really appreciate you making us part of your Wednesday night. But a special moment for Maya Oliver. And now we return to the game at hand. Two of the MVL's best. West M 12 and two on the year, seven and one in the MVL. John Glenn 10 and three, they're six and two in the MVL. Maya has seven of John Glenn's nine points. Misses another free throw. Zeminski offensive rebound and an easy putback. Zeminski joins the scoring action. Now 11 to six. John Glenn with the lead and now playing in a zone defensively. A two three zone and an easy steal. Wide open breakaway and a layup. Emma Dolan, the 5'10 senior. A lot of length and height on this John Glenn team. Almost another steal. Kick to the right wing, three ball. That silences the crowd here in New Concord. Three ball for Deborah Allen and it's 13 to nine. Down low to Zeminski, showing the strength in the low post. Nice touch off the front of the rim, off the glass and in. Back-to-back -back buckets for her after missing her first couple attempts. Free throw line, extended jumper, missed, but an offensive rebound. Now a three ball lined up once again off the backboard. Now another transition opportunity. Oliver lays it in. Timeout, West Muskingum, 17 to nine. Nine points for Maya Oliver, the first 1,000 point scorer as a junior in John Glenn's history, the fourth overall. And the Muskies lead by eight. Timeout on the floor and we'll be back here in a moment at the tank in New Concord. One twenty-one remaining in the first quarter. 17 to nine. John Glenn leading. West M with the basketball. Deborah Allen with it. Still in a zone look defensively is John Glenn. Kind of this matchup two three. And another steal, Maya Oliver with nine points and has a chance to get into double figures before the quarter ends. Loses it and it's going to be West End ball. Hit off her leg and out of bounds. Forty-eight seconds left in the quarter.
Down to the baseline, Spung with it. 30 seconds remaining in the quarter. Branford down low, wide open layup. There it is. An easy deuce. Now 20 seconds left in the quarter. Maya Oliver will slow it down for John Glenn. Eight seconds. Oliver. Half spin. Drives. And is fouled, I believe. Well, official, one official raised his arm as if there was a foul. And one saying take it out underneath. Maya thought she was fouled and going to the free throw line. I thought so too. So they're just going to call it out of bounds. No foul. Two seconds. Zeminski throws it up off the rim. And the quarter ends. 17 to 11. John Glenn out in front after one. And Maya Oliver the newest 1,000 point scorer in John Glenn girls basketball history. The highlight of the first. We'll be back in a moment. Here live on Facebook, X, and YouTube, Storied Rival Sports Media. Second quarter about to get underway here in New Concord, John Glenn High School, MVL basketball on a Wednesday night. Thanks so much for being here. Will Ford with storied rivals live on Facebook, X, and YouTube. And the Muskies will start with the basketball to start the second quarter. And now all the pressure is off for Maya Oliver. Doesn't have to worry about 1,000 points anymore. Dishes inside to Zeminski. Missed shot, offensive rebound. Winland couldn't convert off the nice Zemensky pass. Oliver almost with another steal. Corner three ball, you bet. A three ball once again for Deborah Allen. That's her second three of the game. Six points for her and it's 17-14, John Glenn. Winland with it on the left wing. Oliver flashes to the corner. Now Zeminski up top. Zeminski, bad pass. Corrals it near midcourt. Crossover. Nice find inside Oliver. Almost scoops that one in. Now in transition. Good recovery by John Glenn. And a steal, and the official was in the way. Zeminski, blocking foul and one. A hop step for Riley Zeminski, going to the free throw line. They're saying two shots, but she made the basket. She made it. Two shots. No, it's one. Why? I I'm not sure why it's only one, two shots. It, it, the basket was made. I'm not sure what the discussion is. It should only be one shot, and she just took it. I wish I had a color commentator to uh, discuss this with. My man Dave Hilliard, if you're listening, or if you're watching, why would this be two shots? Why did the basket not count for Riley Zeminski? 
it's not a matter of team fouls. So I'm, I, I'm not understanding what happened there, but only one point out of that for Riley Zeminski is now out of bounds off the three ball. If I sound confused, you're correct. And I think you should be as well. I would love an explanation. I would love to talk to the John Glenn coach about this. Or, But anyway, let's get back to game action. 6.30 remaining in the second quarter. It's 18 to 14. John Glenn leading by four. Now a left wing three ball. Winland rattles out. Dolan the rebound, dumping to Oliver. Lefty layup. Couldn't quite get it off the glass. Gets her own miss. And then gets run over. No foul called. Allen with the crossover. Kicks to the wing. And a traveling violation will be called on Lila Johnson. So much happening. Five forty on the clock in the second quarter. Eighteen fourteen ball game here at John Glenn High School. Riley Zeminski back of the rim on a three ball, and a jump ball will be called. Taylor Spung and Madeline Winland fighting for the basketball off the rebound. Zeminski will check out and go take a seat. Musselman will come in. And Elena Berry comes in as well. Spung with the top of the key. Back in a man-to-man -man defense is John Glenn. Lost out of bounds, and I'm not sure it was touched by a John Glenn player. I think Spung lost that ball, but they're going to keep it with West M. Allen will inbound underneath the basket. Off the inbound, a three, too strong. Allen the offensive rebound, and she's fouled, and will go to the free throw line for a chance to make this a one-possession game with 5.09 remaining in the second quarter. Allen has six points off two three-pointers in this first half. Misses the first free throw. Zemensky will come back in. Maya Oliver will sit down. Allen nails the second one. Three-point game. Seven points for Deborah Allen. Here's Musselman with it on the right wing. Looking down low. Now to the right corner. Driving middle. Scoop, lefty layup. Just off the front of the rim. Now the other way. Allen. Long pass to the left wing. Thornton with it, trying to look for somebody. She'll drive, lay it up herself, and converts over Zeminski's outstretched arms. One point game. Musselman a three. No. Ripping away the rebound, and they're going to call a jump ball. And it'll stay with the Muskies. Oh, slipping. What a move there 
by Riley Zeminski slipping. She's fouled on her way to the basket though, so no shot. But fake the handoff and split the two defenders. And wide open underneath. Nobody covering Zeminski. She was almost a little confused herself as to why she was so wide open. Maya Oliver with a block on the defensive side. 7 points for Zeminski. Oliver has 9 all from the first quarter. Ball on the floor, jump ball. It'll go to West M after Elena Berry mishandled that one. Three thirty remaining in this first half. Down low to Spung. Good ball fake floater in the lane. Laney Johnson. Musselman swings. Over to Barry, deep three ball, too strong. Allen running the other way, Zeminski guarding her. Now driving, getting physical, blocked out of bounds. Emma Dolan, great defense. I believe that's her second block in this first half. Addy Antonets on the drive to the basket there. Allen looking to inbound, gets it in. One dribble pull up, nothing but nylon for Lila Johnson. Six points for her. Oliver pulls back for three. Twelve points for Oliver. A thousand and six on her career. Two, two, two on the clock remaining. Oliver with another steal. It's a two on one. Oliver thought about the Euro. Misses that one. Offensive rebound, John Glenn. Musselman to Winland, who looks back for an offensive set. Oliver gets the basketball. Kind of a bunch set here near the top. And they might be just trying to burn some time here. They're just setting screens. Now Zeminski kicks, Musselman, three ball. Just a touch too strong, gets her own rebound and she's blocked by Spung, out of bounds and it's gonna stay with John Glenn. Zeminski going for it, and so was Johnson. One thirty-two remaining in the first half. Oliver looking, throws it into Emma Dolan. Dolan has two points. Now Zeminski driving, one foot step back. Misses that one, but she's had a good first half. Johnson, pull up, rattles at home. Tie ball game with 110 left. Eight points for Lila Johnson, a freshman for the Tornadoes. And now 60 ticks left. Oliver content to just dribble this one out. She's going to stand near midcourt. Not going to play any defense. Now a kick to Zeminski. She'll stand near midcourt. She's looking to get counted. Now she'll dribble. 
30 seconds. Zemensky will drive and pull it out. 23 seconds. Zeminski splits, drives, blocking foul in the lane. Zeminski thought she was getting called for a second charge. Spung was moving just a touch as she stepped in front of Zeminski. Zeminski will go to the free throw line this time. No, it's not at the free throw line. It's going to go underneath. Lots of confusion about whether a foul is going to the line or not. Inbound is Zeminski, and it's going to be off of Laney Johnson out of bounds. Stays with John Glenn, 16.1 remaining. Terriana Branford checks back in for West M defensively into Madeline Winland. Musselman to Zeminski, now to Oliver with 11. Eight seconds. Oliver putting the moves on. Half spin, kick to the corner. Musselman fires a three, rattles out. Offensive rebound missed, and I don't think she got it off anyway. And we will go to halftime, tied at 23. Two of the top teams in the MVL for girls basketball knotted up after two quarters. We'll be back in a moment after a message from our sponsors that support us throughout the year on our highlight videos, other projects, everything that we do, and we'll be back in a moment. Here at MBHC, we offer adult, dental, pediatric, women's, pharmacy, and transportation services, as well as behavioral health. We accept all patients. Make your appointment today if you're not feeling well. As a locally owned and operated independent insurance agent, Rankin & Rankin values investing in our local communities and students. Best of luck to all the athletes competing this season throughout the Muskingum Valley League. In the Army National Guard, my part-time service lets me serve close to home, keep a full-time job, and earn money for school. I really can have it all in the Army National Guard. Visit NationalGuard.com to find out more. Welcome back to John Glenn High School. After two quarters of play, the Muskies and the Tornadoes are knotted up at 23. Will Ford here with you. Storage Rival Sports Media live on Facebook, X, and YouTube. The highlight of the first half of the first quarter, Maya Oliver coming into tonight needing just six points to reach 1,000 for her career. And she scored nine in the first quarter. Broke 1,000, now has 12 through two quarters of play. And it's been a wonderful offensive and defensive effort for the Muskies so far. West Ham crawled back into it late uh, in the second quarter, now knotted up at 23. But I want to promote our podcast, Jump Street, that we've been doing the last week or so with some players, player interviews, uh, boys and girls basketball. Uh, we actually have uh, one coming out tomorrow. You might have seen a clip earlier today on our socials. Uh, with Riley Zeminski, with these John Glenn girls, uh, recorded at the end of last week, coming out tomorrow, uh, and then um, supposed to sit down with uh, Maya as well tomorrow night, which we'll probably release on Friday, um, just to talk about this uh, wonderful night for her tonight, uh, eclipsing a 1,000 points. But I want to play an interview with uh, Kenley Norman uh, with – the Meadowbrook Colts, she eclipsed 1,000 points for her career before Christmas. And uh, she talked about that moment, you know, becoming the fifth girl in Meadowbrook girls basketball history to reach 1,000. Uh, and her mom is one of those other four girls. Uh, and uh, truly a special moment. She talks about it here on Jump Street, which you can, can subscribe to on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and on YouTube, here's Kenley Norman on Jump Street. We'll go ahead and start. I'm going to ask you a ton of just hard-hitting questions okay. that are high pressure, and there is a correct answer to every one. I, I figured that's what I was walking into, so I'm prepared. 
started. We're here with Kenley Norman with Meadowbrook Girls Basketball. Uh, and Kenley, I really appreciate you taking the time to join our podcast here this week. And um, I'm sure you already knew this, but I kind of want, want to go back to when you scored 1,000 points um, before Christmas. Okay. I'm sure you know this, but you – uh, are the, the only the fifth girl ever in Meadowbrook girls basketball history to score a thousand points. I mean, what's it like to know that you are arguably one of the greatest players, you know, to, to go through Meadowbrook girls basketball and you still have half a season. I mean, you have half of your season, your season left and you're already one of the, the best players to, to go through the program. It's honestly so crazy. And I actually didn't realize that there were only four before me until it happened and they announced it. And I was like, oh, dang. I was like, this is a pretty big deal, I guess. Um, it's also really fun because my mom is was one of the four. She was a thousand point scorer. Um, so it's like kind of cool that it's like, oh, dang, I was the next one. Like, I'm about to have family bragging rights, like whatever. Um, but no, it was a really special moment. And it's never been like my mentality. I never keep track of my stats or I'm like I need to score this many points or I need to get to a thousand so it was honestly just all around a good moment because I didn't feel any pressure to get there I've just played basketball because I love it for the last four years and everything's worked out so far just by loving the game and playing it the way I play so pretty excited I, I was just I was just gonna ask because like go I'm sure going into a game like that like you when you know you have a chance at a thousand like the pressure can probably feel kind of weird. Like you kind of feel pressure to like get it right away there. Everyone's giving you the basketball. They want you to score. But I mean, you just said you, you didn't feel any pressure. Obviously that was a game you guys won pretty easily, but were you just kind of out there just playing and like whenever it happened, it happened or um, yes, like, did I, you feel like you kind of had to get it or what? I didn't really feel that much pressure because honestly, me personally, I was like, it would be really nice to get at a home game. Like I would like to do it in our gym. Sure. And we went into that game and I think I needed nine points. Before that, I the, the beginning of that week, I thought I was like 40 points away. I had no clue that I was close. And I knew that we had like two home games after that. So I was like, okay, if I manage to not score nine points, then it's fine. Like there's no pressure. Like I'll just come back to the next one and we'll see what happens. Yeah. What what was the moment like with your mom? Because you mentioned your mom's at that one of the four of the other four. What was it like, like in that exact moment, you, you score a thousand, they stop the game and you kind of get to share that with with your mom? It's actually really sweet. Caden Casey does a lot of good like pictures and videos and stuff for you guys. He got the whole moment on camera and I'm so happy that I'll have that forever and you can see so I go over I hug my team my sister's a freshman and she plays so she comes and gives me my flowers I get to hug her and then they give me my banner and I'm looking at it and I look up and I'm like where's my mom and you can literally see me like say it on the video and she ran down and I got to give her a hug and she just told me how proud she was of me she was like go like have your moment whatever and I was it was a lot of fun it was really special like she supported me more than I could ask for in everything that I do so it was just really sweet did you know they were going to stop the game when you hit a thousand or like, did you have an idea of that? Did you want them to stop the game? Like, like, I guess, I what was that like? Cause I'm sure that's kind of weird. Like it, it was. if you watch, if you ever see the video, it like, ha like I, I make the shot and everybody kind of goes crazy. And I just start like walking back to the bench. Cause like, what do you do? After right. That? And I knew that they would stop it. Like I knew coach Miles would call a timeout. Um, I didn't really know what the proceedings were. They had given me my banner, and then I was, like, looking at the crowd. I literally told, like, our crowd thanks. And then I go to, like, go start talking to my team, and they're like, Kinley, turn around. And there's, like, camera people like, trying to get my picture. There's people holding up signs. I really just felt like – I don't know. It was so weird because knowing that all eyes were on me, but also we go out and we play every time, and everybody's just watching, so it really wasn't any different. Right. Well, and it's also weird because, like, what if that's like a big spot in the game? You know, it's like fourth quarter, two minutes left, and you'd like yes. tie the game with that shot or something. And it's like, you're going to stop. Like, are you going to stop the game then? Yeah. Like, it's kind of it's a weird spot. And, like, not it's that fun. you don't want to be recognized for it, but it's like, do you also yeah. want to disrupt the flow of the game also? You know what I mean? Um, but luckily, it was in a game where you guys won pretty easily and not as much pressure on the situation. Um, but, Enough about you. Obviously, you're awesome, uh, <laughs> but I want to talk about your team um, because you guys have won uh, two games in a row to start 2024. You've got Maysville and Cambridge up next. Obviously, Cambridge, the team up north, that rivalry. Like whenever you see that on the schedule, does every? I mean, obviously, you, you play to win every game. You want to win every game the rest of the way. But when you see Cambridge on the schedule, does everything else just like not matter at that point? And it's like we just got to beat Cambridge. It doesn't matter how we do it. it doesn't matter what way how we do it we just got to beat them and that's the that's the focus when you see them on the schedule 
Cambridge is always a big game, and especially, uh, like, once I got into high school, like, Meadowbrook girls basketball was really just, the program was kind of, like, not in the best shape. Like, I hadn't really had, like, a solid team or anything. And so coming out and, like, working towards that, they beat us my freshman year. I think we split with them my sophomore year. But then to, like, come back and beat them for the first time in I don't know how many years, and especially with Coach Miles being new to the coaching staff. And he came from Cambridge, so I was like, this is Mm -hmm. perfect for you, too. Um, Right. So definitely we try to take it just one game at a time. If we're focused on Maysville right now, we'll practice based on that for the next couple days. But Cambridge is definitely different. Even – walking into that gym it's just like oh uh, like there's just something in the air right um, yeah you can you can the feel athlete. the energy yes you can and obviously there's no love lost between both no, sides so never. yeah it's, that's fun so after this season what's what's next for you are you planning to maybe play ball at the next level in college um i mean other sports like i don't know if you play other sports as well like maybe what what's your thought process as you I mean, obviously you want to get through the season and get through the rest of the school year, but what have you thought about when it comes to, you know, college next year for you? I'm definitely very interested in playing in college. I would love to. And I also, it's just so weird. Like I couldn't imagine finishing, like playing our last game this season and that being like my last basketball game. Mm-hmm. I just That's like, not a, not, it's not my whole life, but it's just something that I'm so passionate about. And it's always been like my love. Um, I, I don't know where I want to go to college. Everybody asks me, everybody around me is probably more stressed about my college decision than I am. I just know that if I plan on going to play somewhere, like I'm going to focus on my season at hand first because that will kind of get me out there, I guess, and determine where I want to go. I plan on going to school for education. I want to be a teacher. I want to teach high school English. So definitely focus more on like the academic side of it first. And even with my mom right. and basketball being so big, she tells me, she's like, I know you love basketball, but like, it doesn't have to be the only thing. Like you do, what's going to make you happy, do what you want to do. Like you're going to school for your education, figure all that out first. So I guess we'll see. I had a visit at Mount Union. I've talked to some other schools to go schedule some visits and stuff, talk to some coaches. So it's looking pretty good so far. But like I said, I'm just really focused on this season and giving it all I have here first. As you should. Yeah, that's fair. Um, but I, I really appreciate you taking, you know, five, six, seven minutes to talk some basketball here today and you got out of school and, you know, we're, we talk some ball for a few minutes. Really fun. But appreciate you taking the time. Good luck uh, for the, the, you know, the rest of the season. Hopefully you guys can make some noise in the tournament this year and, you know, just best of luck the rest of the way. You're an awesome player and I really appreciate you joining our podcast. So thank you so much for having me. This was awesome. And I appreciate everything you guys do. So thank you. Welcome back to John Glenn High School. Second half underway. I poorly timed my interview there. Running into the first minute of the third quarter. Riley Zeminski with two baskets out of the halftime break. And she is now up to 11 points. She had an and one. Missed the free throw. It was a missed three there from Deborah Allen on the West M offensive end. And then a fast break layup by Zeminski off the steal and turnover. So two players in double figures for John Glenn, Oliver and Zeminski with 11 and 12. Will Ford with you here live on Facebook, X and YouTube for Storied Rival Sports Media. Thanks for being here. Dump inside to Zeminski, rush that shot. Oliver comes away with the miss, drives. Lots of contact. I think she got poked in the eye. Winland with the rebound. Musselman to Dolan for three. Just a touch too strong. Zeminski, another offensive rebound, and that ball's going to go out of bounds and stay with John Glenn. The officials are letting them play in this third quarter. A minute 42 seconds gone by in the third. Zeminski with the four points in this third quarter for John Glenn. Has the basketball. Two minutes gone by. And I think John John Glenn is content to just play this game slow.
just standing near midcourt. Emma Dolan was not ready for the basketball. Let's that one go out of bounds. I thought, uh, I think she thought it was just going to be a back and forth game between her and Zeminski. Here's Allen with it in the left corner. Gets a screen. Gets bodied up by Winland. Great straight up defense. Allen sneaks away for three. Offensive rebound. Missing the putback, but a foul into the stripe for two. Jaden Thornton, sophomore. Second foul on Maya Oliver, who has 12 points. Thornton is good on the first. We have our guy Sean Fisher on the sideline tonight, capturing the action for both sides. So you have to check out our Unreal highlights for this game next week. Zeminski, who had a, a controversial controversial no call in the first half on an and one. The ball clearly went in the basket and should have went to the free throw line for an and one and instead shot two free throws. And I got confirmation from our guy Sean down on the sideline. He said that the refs just didn't see it go in and they missed it. Although I clearly saw one signal and one. Travel called by Musselman or on Musselman, excuse me. But that is the word from our guy Sean, is that the refs just missed it. And they were telling Coach Sigmund they did not see the basketball go in, which to me is unfathomable. I don't understand that. Just three of them. Everyone in the gym and everyone watching this game saw it go in the basket. Allen on the side out. Now to the left corner, or left wing, excuse me. Antoinette's now to the top of the key. Spung spots up for three. Yes! A three ball for Taylor Spung. West M takes the lead. Missed shot, out of bounds, off of Zeminski. Halfway through the third period. Allen has seven, down to Spung, who just hit the three ball. Bodied up by Winland. They're going to call a foul on Winland by boxing out. Too physical of a box out, knocking Spung to the ground. Thirty to twenty seven now, a basket by Antonettes. Four points in the game, 3.28 remaining in the third quarter. Oliver drives, crafty passes, Zemensky gets doubled, splits it, and will go to the free throw line after getting hacked. That's Spung's second foul. Zemensky with 11 points in this game, misses the first free throw. John Glenn has not been great at the free throw line tonight. Zeminski's missed a couple. Now 
Makes the second one, though, and now evens her point total with Maya Oliver's at 12 apiece. Down low, nice passing, losing the ball. And there's going to be a foul called. No, a timeout. Timeout, West Muskingum. 30-second timeout, so we'll stay here with you. Facebook, X, and YouTube, Story Rival Sports Media. 30 to 28, the visiting Tornadoes in front in the third quarter. West End will inbound underneath out of the timeout. Launching that basketball out of bounds. And no, it, they're gonna, it's going to stay with West End. No one touched the ball. A lot of confusion here tonight. True on the jumper in the mid-range. Jaden Thornton makes it a four-point advantage for West M. John Glenn breaks the press, but now a trap on Winland. Gets it to Jessica Church. She drives, puts up a floater on the baseline and misses that one. West M now running the other way, a chance to take a six or seven-point uh, lead with 2.30 left in the third quarter. Johnson to Spung. Now back to Thornton. Left corner, three ball. No good, and now Oliver running in transition. It's a one on two. She drives short on the layup. They're gonna call a jump ball. And the possession arrow favors West M. 2.06 remaining in the third. Now a 30 second timeout called by John Glenn. If I've sounded confused at different points in the night, I apologize for that. Um, but I think a lot of people in this gym have been confused with some of the calls and non-calls in this game. And I don't like to be that guy that calls out officiating. I know that you know mistakes happen, obviously. I mean, no game is played or called perfect. But just a lot of confusion, at least when I'm watching and trying to describe the action to you. Johnson walks the ball up the floor. They're gonna say she traveled. Oliver, quick, hop step, missed that one. Now in transition, nice bounce pass, missed the layup, but an offensive rebound, backing it out for three. Emma Dolan with a block, her third of the night. Dolan is making her presence felt on the defensive end tonight. Just two points in the scoring, scoring column. But down low to Zeminski, she misses that one. She's frustrated with herself and the ball 
We'll go back to the Tornadoes with 70 seconds remaining in the third. Allen with seven points. It's been a while since she scored. Two three balls and a free throw. Neither team been, t been particularly good from the free throw line here in this one. But now West End will take their turn slowing this game down. 40 seconds. Now some pressure from Maya Oliver to the left wing. Now to Allen again. Antoinette has it. Backdoor cutting was Branford. She didn't get it. Now a hesitation, a drive, and off the glass for the deuce. Lila Johnson makes it a six point lead for the Muskies. Maya Oliver pushes off, offensive foul. An elbow to the chin. Third foul on Maya. An inbound to Branford with 11 seconds remaining in the third quarter. She gets doubled to the corner. Antoinette's for three. Rattles out. Offensive rebound. Missed. Another spung. Off the glass. Beats the buzzer to end the third quarter. And West M. An eight point lead. Going into the fourth, five points for Spung, and they have all the momentum right now at the tank at John Glenn High School in New Concord. We'll be back for the fourth quarter after this, live on Facebook, X, and YouTube with Storied Rival Sports Media. Back in the tank, getting ready for the fourth quarter of play, 36-28. West M with a big run to end the third. Taylor spun with a buzzer beater on a third opportunity. Two missed shots, two offensive rebounds, and spun finishes off the third quarter. John Glenn will have the ball to start the fourth. West M, just two losses on the year, 12 and two, John Glenn 10 and three. One more quarter to decide this one. Dolan on the right wing with it. Now to Musselman, high post, Winland. Dolan fires a three, misses that. The ball is saved and back in Dolan's hands. Oliver off a screen, loses the basketball. Antoinette's with it, carries it though. West Ham coaches are arguing that ball was tipped, which it very well might have been. But the motion certainly looked carry-like. Whether that ball was deflected, I, I'm not too sure. Little triangle offense action here as Zeminski backs into the post. Double teamed and misses that shot. And a foul 88 feet from the basket on Musselman. A 
That's just her first foul of the night. Laney Johnson races up the floor to Spung. Ball fakes. Puts up the jumper, no good. Allen the offensive rebound to the corner for three, Johnson. An 11 point lead for West M. Musselman to Zeminski, top of the key. Too quick on that shot, out of bounds, and it's gonna go to West M. Oliver diving out of bounds. This game, still plenty of time, still almost an entire quarter, six minutes, 19 seconds. But you can feel the momentum is, is clearly in the grasp of West M. Allen races. Antonets now looking, dumps it down low. One dribble in the lane, losing it. Now Allen down low to Spung. Hoop, harm, three-point play opportunity for Taylor Spung. Busting this game wide open, 41-28. Missing the free throw, and they're going to call a lane violation on John Glenn. I believe it was on Zeminski. So Spung missed it, and we'll get another opportunity. A critical mental error there. This one no good as well, but an offensive rebound and a foul going to be called on John Glenn. Madeline Winland picks that one up. Timeout called by John Glenn. Full timeout. And we'll stay right here. Will Ford with you on Storied Rival Sports Media's Facebook page, X, and YouTube. MVL Girls Basketball on a Wednesday night. Want to take the time to promote our High School Hoops podcast, Jump Street. Saw an interview at halftime with Kenley Norman with the Meadowbrook Colts. Eclipse 1,000 points this season. Joined her mom as one of only five Meadowbrook girls to reach 1,000 points in their career. Special moment for her, but plenty of other interviews up on our YouTube page as well. You can also watch them on Facebook. You can listen to them on Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcasts. Our latest episode that released this morning is with Kashocton's Colton Conkle, and boy, oh boy, he was red hot the other night. What do you have, 22 first quarter points? We have a show with Tri-Valley's Addison Wilson with Tri-Valley Girls Basketball. That came out yesterday. Tomorrow, Riley Zeminski's episode will drop. And then we have interviews coming up with Maya Oliver as we resume game action here in the fourth quarter. Left corner, three ball, short. Oliver the rebound. Thought about taking on the world. Instead, launches, air balls a deep three. Musselman stepped out of bounds trying to save it. But Oliver will join our show tomorrow, release on Friday. And we're also gonna have Jameson Stinson from Sheridan Girls Basketball join our show. And we'll drop that on the weekend. So, plenty more coming your way. 5.25 remaining in this game. A 13 point advantage for West M. And a foul going to be called. Riley Zeminski picks up that foul, her second on the night.
Nice feed inside, Zeminski, good defense recovering. Spung and Winland get tied up, no call, and a jump shot rattles in for Johnson. What a sequence. Oliver rushes a shot off the glass and a foul is going to be called on Winland. Spung in there again. Temper starting to flare. Officials are having to step in and separate. And you can feel both crowds. You can feel the angst among both crowds here. They're not happy with the, the non-calls. And this official is going to talk to both Winland and Spung here in the lane. Neither crowd is happy, though, and two free throws now for Johnson. Johnson has seven points. Make it eight. She and Jaden Thornton both have eight points. Deborah Allen and Taylor Spung have seven. Antonettes has four for the players on the court for the Tornadoes. A rebound and a turnover thrown away by Elena Berry. 450 remaining. A trap near midcourt. Now Johnson. Fine Spung. Free throw line extended. Drive, a feed. Off the glass, the banker's no good. Ball's on the floor. Allen drives, poked away by Oliver. On the ground, and a jump ball. And it will go, stay rather, with the Tornadoes. Into the game, Lila Johnson. Allen will just reset the five seconds and throw it off of Zeminski's leg. Poked away in a turnover. Oliver would just 12 points after scoring nine in the first quarter. And a big three from Zemensky gives her 15 on the game. Down to 13 points, the advantage, and a tough banker off the glass for Jaden Thornton. In double figures now with 10. Barry will drive. Spung. No foul called. Possession's going to stay with John Glenn as it goes out of bounds. I'm not sure that Spung ever touched it. She just fell down. Barry with it to Oliver in the corner, gets doubled. Step back three, her second air ball, and they're going to call a push. And that's on Thornton, so it'll be a side out. That's the fourth foul for Thornton. Zeminski trying to find somebody and throws it in and gets it back. Zeminski wants a three, fires a three. Air balls that one and it goes out of bounds. John Glenn starting to force shots up now. 3.30 remaining in the game, and West M up big. 15 is the lead. Here's Allen. Dribble handoff to Johnson, gets doubled. 
Antonets in the corner, guarded by Winland, driving middle, gets to the basket. Antoinette now has six. 17 point lead for West Ham. Winland steps into a three and is short. Zeminski the rebound, can't get the put back to go. And they're gonna call a jump ball. Full timeout called on the floor for John Glenn. This game was tied at 23 at halftime. John Glenn has just scored only eight points since the halftime break. A look at what's coming up on the schedule for both teams after tonight. For West M, they're gonna travel to Philo on the 20th. And that'll be at 12.30. And that'll be their third third of three road games in a row. Then they'll be back at home against Coshocton on the 24th and then two more road games the 27th and the 31st of January. Zeminski misses a shot, gets her own rebound. No, she doesn't. It's ripped away. Now West M will bring it across half court. Zeminski a steal and a foul in the open court. Up next for John Glenn, two more home games in a row against New Lex and Meadowbrook on the 20th and the 24th and at Philo on the 27th and to end January, a home game against Riverview. Oliver steps back for three and is fouled. Allen saying she didn't touch her. But Oliver hit the deck and she'll go to the free throw line for three free throws. Oliver misses the first free throw. End of the game for John Glenn, Hannah Chrisman. Seeing her first action tonight. Oliver drains the second. Now has 13 points on the night. And she's averaging 14 and a half on the season. Riley Zeminski's averaging 20, has just 15 tonight. Two for three from the line. 226 remaining in a 15 point game. Oliver playing good full court defense. And they're gonna call a foul on Oliver, blocking foul. The official just said four, but he means number two. Because there is no number four on the John Glenn roster. That is her fourth foul. Jaden Thornton will go to the line. Two shots with 2.18 remaining in this ball game. Barely disturbs the net on the first one. She has 11 points on the night now. On the year she's averaging 
just under 11 points per game. Misses the free throw and gets her own miss. Now a steal from Oliver off the trap. Ahead to Zeminski. Jump stop. Now 17 points for Zeminski. Under two minutes remaining. Nice find in the lane. And West M has broke 50 points in this one. 51 to 35 with a minute 40 left. Zeminski crossing over, spinning. Losing the ball and is fouled. Oliver tried to throw it off the back of the girl guarding the inbound and she stepped over the end line. Right idea, just got a head start without throwing the basketball. 90 seconds left. West M, nice fake and a drive and a layup off the glass. What a move from Lila Johnson. She has 12 in this one. Oliver, hesitation, gets into the lane, misses the layup. West End comes away with the rebound, and now they'll pull it out, try to slow it down. John Glenn still playing trap defense. Zeminski gambles. In the lane, missing the layup was Johnson, and now under a minute remaining. 53 to 35. Musselman, right wing three ball, no. Another defensive rebound, throwing it ahead. And a layup to cap off the night for the Tornadoes. Deborah Allen gets to nine points tonight. 30 seconds left. Another missed three from Oliver. And the Tornadoes will dribble out the rest of the clock. A historic night in John Glenn basketball as Maya Oliver eclipses 1,000 points, the first junior in the program to ever do it and becomes the fifth player all time. But the night is spoiled just a little bit by West M as they come out on top here tonight in a 20-point victory. Stellar second-half performance. They win 55-35, to and they improve their record to 13 and 2 on the season, John Glenn will fall to 10 and 4. I want to thank you so much for joining us here in New Concord on a Wednesday night for MVL Girls Basketball. Will Ford with you live on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, Storied Rival Sports Media. I want to plug our podcast one more time, Jump Street High School Hoops Podcast. Wherever you get your podcasts on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, we post the video form on YouTube and Facebook as well. Check out tomorrow's episode with Riley Zeminski. At the time of that recording, they were 9-3. and three. They are now 10-4 and four on the season. So they've played two games since we recorded that episode. Just keep that in mind. Uh, but just doing so many player interviews, I don't want to re release them all on the same day. I want to do one a day. Um, so unfortunately, hers got pushed back a couple days. But that is all right because we're cranking them out, man. Riley Zeminski tomorrow. We're going to interview Maya Oliver and Jameson Stinson tomorrow night as well. And those will come out in the next couple of days. But subscribe to that podcast wherever you get it, wherever you watch it, wherever you listen to it. And make sure to be on the lookout for the next time we do a live game, whether it's boys or girls basketball in the MVL or the LCL. We'll make sure we put out, put out the info whenever we decide to do another one. But really appreciate you making us part of your Wednesday night. Will Ford signing off for now with Storied Rival Sports Media, the final once again 55 35.